In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to read data from files. To begin with, I'd like to start by opening this song.txt, something that we created in the last tutorial, and I've added in a couple of comments as to which notes are actually being played. So what we'd like to be able to do is to parse this data such that the first field here represents the frequency, and the second field here represents the duration. To do this, we'll come back over here to our main program, and we'll start by including a using statement, using system.io. And to be able to read from files, we're going to create something called a stream reader, and we'll call it SR. Now, instantiating a stream reader is very similar to a stream writer. Notice that we have 10 different ways that we can bring a stream reader to life, but the easiest one is just to name the file that you want to read from. Now, what you'll soon discover is that the program is going to have difficulty finding this file, so we're going to have to have a discussion about file paths. When we read data from a file, for now, we're just going to read a series of strings. So we can drop down to this next line and we can say string data gets sr.readline. And again, this works very similar to how console works. Now I'm purposely doing some things incorrectly because these are common errors that I see from beginning students. So we'll drop down to the next line and we'll do a console.write line of the one line of data that we just read. And if we were to run this, you would probably see that it's not going to behave very well and we get a file not found exception, which probably has something to do with its inability to find song.txt. So let's stop debugging. Now you may be wondering why it can't find song.txt. After all, it's right here. But the problem is because the executable doesn't live in the same directory as song.txt. To show you what I mean, we can open the project folder, and if we dig around, you'll see that there's a bin directory. Inside the bin directory is a debug directory, and then right here you can actually see the executable. Notice that you don't see song.txt right here. And the reason is because it's located a couple of directories up. In fact, if you look around, you'll see that it's located one, two directories up from where the executable is located. So let's reduce this window and go back to our code. So to specify that we want to search two directories up, I'm going to use a special notation of dot dot slash dot dot slash. The dot dot actually means go up one directory. So here you can see that we're going up two, at which point you should be able to find song.txt. Now, if we were to go ahead and run it, you should see that we read in the first line of our file. So if we can read in one line, how do we read in multiple lines? You may think that we could use a for loop to do this, but remember for loops are good when we know exactly where we're going to start and end, and in this case we could have any number of lines that are inside this file. So we'll use a while loop instead. We'll say, so long as the data does not equal null, then we will print that data out. Now if I were to run the code at this point, you'll see another common error that beginning programmers make. You'll see in the output window that we have an infinite loop. The problem was that we forgot to read the next line of data. So right after I print it out, I'm going to say that data gets sr.readline. And if we were to run it again, you can see that we get the output of the entire file. The last thing that I need to do is to show you how to work with the data that we've just read. A lot of the data that you work with in the real world is comma separated, just like we have here. So the basic idea is that we're going to break the data that we just read by using the comma as a delimiter. And by delimiter, I mean the thing that's going to divide this string. Now you may or may not be aware of this, but strings have a split method that will actually return us an array of strings. So what I can do is right after console.readline, I can create an array of strings, and I'll call it values, and then I'll assign it data.split, passing it the comma as a delimiter. So what's going to happen if we look back here at song.txt, 262 is going to go into values of 0, 2000 is going to go into values of 1, and C is going to go into values of 2. As we read the next line, 392 is going to go into values of 0, 2000 is going to go into values of 1, and G is going to go into values of 2, and so on. Now that we've done that, I can declare a variable here called frequency, and we will parse the information that we're working with, so int32.parse, passing it values of 0. We'll do the same thing for duration assigning it int32.parse of values of 1, and we'll leave values of 2 alone for now. So the last thing that we need to do is to console.beep the frequency and duration, 
And when we run it, you can hear this wonderful song. And you can see that console.beep is not exactly a wonderful instrument to work with. So that's it for this tutorial. You should now know how to read from files and know how to parse that data when necessary.